Hi, this is Imad Al Alim by Umid Researches, Middle East Medical Information Center and Directory, Epilepsy Awareness Program founder and publisher. I do welcome you to the third episode of Understanding EEG. This episode will be on the electrical activity of the brain. We will learn the three major parts of the brain, which are the cerebrum, the cerebrum, and the brainstem. We will know how the electrical signal is generated on the brain. So let us start the show. The brain can be divided into three separate areas that are the cerebrum, or also called cerebral, the cerebrum, and the brainstem. So as we can see here, these are the three major parts of the brain. This is the cerebrum, or also called cerebral, and it is the largest part of the brain, which allows us to think, make decisions, imagine. It contains about 10 billion neurons and about 50 trillion synapses. The second part of the brain is the small part called cerebrum. And by the way, cerebrum is a Latin word which means the little brain. So the cerebrum is a region of the brain that plays an important role in motor control. It, mo it may also be involved in some cognitive functions such as attention and language and in regulating fear and pleasure responses. But its movement-related functions are the most solidly established. The cerebrum does not initiate movement, but it contributes to coordination, precision, and accurate timing. So this is the cerebrum, as you see, and it's very small as compared to the cerebrum, or the cerebral, as this cerebral has the biggest size of the brain, and cerebrum has the smallest size of the brain, but this bit, it's a smaller size. It has a real important functions and movement related. The third part of the brain is called the brainstem, which is this one. The third one is called the brainstem, which is this one. And brainstem is the posterior part of the brain adjoining and structurally continuous with the spinal cord. So brainstem is the posterior part of the brain and it is adjoining structurally continuous with the spinal cord as we can see here the brain stem provides so the main function of the brain stem it provides the main motor and sensory innervation to the face and neck via the cranial nerves though small this is an extremely important part of the brain as the nerve connections of the motor and sensory systems from the main part of the brain to the rest of the body pass through the brainstem. So, I mean, it's it has got also a very small size as compared to the cerebrum or cerebral, but the functions it, per it performs is really and extremely important as the nerve connections of the motor and sensory systems from the brain part to the rest of the body passes through the brain we will talk about this layer of the cerebrum which is shown here and which is called cerebral uh, cortex sorry the surface of the cerebrum is called the cerebral cortex so what is cerebral cortex it is the surface of the cerebrum and it is composed of six and six layers of neuron or nerve cells which is above white pathway so this is the white pathway and this is our cerebrum this is our cerebral cortex and cerebral cortex is the surface of the cerebrum if we talk about the differences between cerebrum and cerebrum we will know that the cerebrum has a sensory areas so the cerebrum has a sensory areas that interpret interpret sensory activities Association areas that are concerned with emotional and intellectual processes such as judgment, memory. It controls all voluntarily activities. On the other hand, the cerebrum coordinates muscular activities and maintains body posture and balance. So if we repeat what are the differences between the cerebrum and the cerebrum, we will know that Cerebrum has sensory areas that interpret sensory activities, association areas that are concerned with emotional and intellectual processes, such as judgment, memory, and it also controls the voluntary activities. 
The cerebellum coordinates muscular activities and maintains body posture and balance. So here we will know how the electrical signal is generated from the brain. This is a sample of the neurons, actually this is a speculated sample of neurons. And uh, the electrical activity of the rich nerve fibers that are found in the cerebrum that are recorded by electroencephalograph. The electroencephalograph does not record the activity of single neurons, but records the gross electrical activity between two electrodes placed on the scalp of a participant. This means that, for example, if we have an electrode connected to a patient, and the, the montage, the first label of the electrode says FP1, F3, which means that the AEG machine is calculating the potential difference between FP1 and F3, and so on for the remaining labels of the montage. Neurons, which are also known as, of course, as we have learned earlier, nerve cells, differ widely, but all share some basic characteristics. All neurons contain a cell body, a nucleus, and an axon. It contained inside the neuron, contained inside the neuron are high level of positively charged potassium ions. Outside of the neuron, positively charged potassium ion, ion levels are low. So from inside, the contained potassium ions are of a high level of positively charged. But outside the neuron, positively charged potassium ion levels are low. The opposite is true of positively charged sodium ions. There are low level of positively charged sodium ions inside the neurons and high level outside. The membrane, the membrane of the neuron is permeable and positively charged potassium ions are able to leak out of the neuron and similarly positively charged sodium ions are able to leak into the neuron. The membrane of the neuron is selectively more permeable to the positively charged potassium ions that positively char charged sodium ions. That is to say, it is easier for the positively charged potassium ions to leave the neuron than it is for the positively charged sodium ions to either to enter sorry, the neuron. This activity results in an eventual loss of positive charge within the charged sodium ions. Uh, sorry, uh, this will leave the neuron this will result in an eventual loss of positive charge within the neuron. Once the inside of the neuron reaches minus 70 mV, uh, the permeability of the neuron membrane changes and no longer allows to escape of positively charged potassium ions. It is at this stage that there is a level of equilibrium is found and this is known as the neuron's resting potential. So hopefully by now we have understood the electrical activity of the brain and uh, we'll, see, we'll see you hopefully soon on our next episode of Understanding EEG. Thank you and have a good day. Stay tuned please.